Welcome to another episode on the Business Growth Club where I've got Michelle Thomas and she is the the woman behind the Happy Business Express magazine. So I'm excited to have her as a guest on this podcast talking about lifting the mood of the planet with the Happy Business Club. Very different topic. So <laughs> this is going to be so interesting and she has just admitted to me that I'm probably going to have to show up because once she starts, like she can talk about it all day. So let's be brave. Let's throw ourselves over to your way, Michelle. <laughs> Thank and you please, so much, Danny. Please introduce yourself, but also what the Happy Business Club is. Right. Where the heck do I start? Um, I am a <laughs> happiness coach. That is what I do on a day-to-day basis. I speak to beautiful, heart-led, intelligent business owners Um, And we figure out where their superpowers are and we figure out how to bring happiness back into their lives and then bring that to their business as well. So that is probably one of the key elements of the Happy Business Club. Um, With with regards to the Happy Business Express, because it's it's not two separate things, but it is. The Happy Business Club is the the business that I run to help um, small business owners. But the Happy Business Express is a magazine that I started because I didn't want to write emails to people (laughs) because I thought it was boring. Um, And I did a magazine and it it, it turned into a community. So this started, um, I like to, I like to think that I created a community because I know what it feels like to be a small business owner when you're there and you're on your own and you're coming at it from an, an angle of passion and, um, you know, wanting to, that's why I say help lift the mood of the planet. When you want to help other people, when you want to help individuals do better, have better lives, be happier, do things that are actually enrich their lives and the lives of other people, then what you, you are what I call a heart-led business owner. You're doing it from the heart because you really believe in it and you have a passion for it. And you, you know, you might be a leader in your field. You might be somebody that has a lot of ideas, and you want betterment. You want betterment for this planet. You don't want the planet to be a re- in a really rubbish mood all the time because yeah. that's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing. Um, it doesn't seem to be getting much better. Uh, I know the tide is turning and the way that people are seeing things is slightly improving. But there's a lot that's happening in the world that's kind of like keeping us down. And yeah. And rather than, uh, you know, just flowing with gravity and then allowing it to keep us down, uh, we have the capacity as human beings to look up. And, you know, positive psychology is the thing that that holds a lot of that up. And the way that we are as human beings holds a lot of that up. And I think when you find somebody who is passionate about helping other people in lots of different ways, I'm not just talking about coaching. I'm talking yeah. about spiritual ways. I'm talking about, you know, just tiny little things that that they're really good at, that they think somebody else could be good at and that could be passed on and have a ripple effect. Um, and then that can make a massive, massive difference in the long run. And ultimately, it's about how we feel as people, how we connect with people, how we share our joy and passion, and enthusiasm and happiness, because it is contagious. And, yeah. and every single person that is a person who, who does that for other people needs the kind of support that, that they give themselves so that they can fill their cup, allow that to be overflowing and then spread that. Um, and I think it's really important. I, I it think, is. Yeah. It is so important. And you mentioned community, which is amazing. And like this you created this magazine, created the Happy Business Club, and then it obviously evolved into a club, a community. And I feel that's so important, especially now more than ever. We had lockdown where we were all separated on our own. We all connected online. People are coming back to connecting in person. And it's such a <laughs> it's such a big thing, isn't it? For happiness, I guess. Yes. It really Scientifically is. speaking, it's it's um, unbelievable. I mean, I, I like to live in the world of energetics. I think it's part science and part a lot of things that we don't know about, but it just works, you know, like electricity, quite literally energy. And I think we start understanding about things in terms of energy. When we talk about physical energy, which we tend to know quite a lot about, when you're in the room with somebody, 
you you connect with them on a completely completely different level than when you are online with them um and it and it makes me laugh because i remember back in the day when you know, social media wasn't even a thing and and you had um internet dating and in between husbands because i've been married twice both times to a guy called alan my my current yeah. husband alan, my previous husband was alan and there was a gap in between and i tried internet dating and it was quite very much in its infancy and I got really excited about, you know, meeting people, um, you know, by text and by messaging and stuff. And we'd build up this rapport online. And then when we met each other, it was like the energy wasn't there. It was so weird. So, you know, what you what you feel online is not necessarily what you'll feel in person, but almost the opposite can be true because sometimes you can walk into a room with a person and you can feel something that something so amazing that you just, 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 it just falls flat in a text or a message or whatever. Not always, yeah. but I think when you go in person, you literally physically feel the energy. When you go to give somebody a hug, you a hugger. I'm a hugger. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a hugger. Hugs, huggers unite. Yeah. When you go into a room and you, you hug somebody and you put your arms around them and, and, you know, if you see me and you don't like hugging, then you turn and run because I'm going <laughs> to hug the live out of you. You put your arms around somebody and it's it's an opportunity for for your heart. And there is heart, there is energy in the heart. There's physical energy in the heart. For your heart meets theirs. Yeah. Because that's the closest way of putting two hearts together. And I don't know about you, you can give something that somebody else is missing just by giving them a hug. So it might be comfort, it might be joy, it might be excitement. It, it, it could be lots and lots of different kind of emotions that they may be and needing from somebody if you can give that to them confidence you can give somebody confidence through a hug um and but you can't do that online can you so are you saying then that basically we can lift the mood of the planet just by giving hugs to everybody every day <laughs> i think it's a, i think it's a valid way i think it's an absolutely yeah. valid way there's been there's been loads of experiments you know there's been loads of social experiments where people have been on the street and offering people hugs and it you know if it makes a difference to that one person if that if that hug can allow one person to calm their nervous system, which is effectively what you're doing. It's a form of therapy. If that hug can help them to calm their nervous system and they can reset themselves emotionally and physically and mentally to go off and do great things because effectively that's the place that they're going to do it from, that is going to have an impact on the next person that they meet and, and so on and so forth. So you don't, yeah, you don't kind of like dismiss the little things Hugs are it's big. like the high five thing, like we always do. You know when the kids do something really good, high yeah. five. We still do it. Like even though my son's ten now and he's growing up, still high five. And like even me and my husband have done it before. You know when I've welcomed the client in, I'm like, he's like, well done. I'm like, yeah, like celebrating <laughs> ourselves because. And it was an experiment, like you say. Um, I think it was like a joker's thing that went out, but actually what they did was, um, they stood in the middle of like a park or something with a big sign on them, give me a high five. And I think they've done it with hugs, with kisses, all sorts on these different programs. Mm -hmm. But I do remember watching one specifically, like give me a high five and telling people to do it. And at first, lots of people were walking past like, but then people were like, oh. And as soon as like, they were walking, you know, day to day, plain face, and then they saw the sign and they were like, ah. And as soon as they did it, obviously it's a physical connection, you know, touching hands. And then they did, and you see them the change, or they're laughing at the person, and they think it's funny they've just high fived the stranger, but they've had a connection there. It is. It's about that energy, like you and say. it changes their state. It changes yeah. their mood. It changes their state. Um, I mean, if you think about it, if you if you high five somebody, what you're doing is you're celebrating, and you're doing the same thing as as a hug. You're you're transferring some of your energy to them. So if you're excited. Now, this is one of the biggest reasons that I say celebrate. Celebrate every single win and celebrate with other people. Number one, you're acknowledging them. You're acknowledging that they've done something amazing. You're reminding them that they've done something amazing. So when you put your hand up, it's almost like a mirror. It's almost like, give me your energy and I'll give it back to you to show you what yeah. it is that you have done that's amazing. So you're acknowledging something that's amazing. You don't even have to say anything. You just stick your hand up, high five, you, you know. Um, yeah. But also you you you're transferring that energies back to them and you creating because I always believe that if you celebrate, you create excitement. That is the way to excitement. That is the way to create excitement. If you want to be excited in your life about anything, you practice celebrating. Because you practice celebrating, you get really good at being excited. So the more often you're excited. Why do you think 
that somebody like me goes around fizzing around being excited about every damn thing that I could possibly <laughs> lay my hands on. It's infectious. Yeah, but I do that because I celebrate everything. I celebrate everything that I do. I celebrate everything that I, that anybody else does. I look for things to celebrate and I celebrate the I hell out of them. I mean, at the beginning of the year, I cel- <laughs> I celebrated um I celebrated a spot coming out. I had a, a white head that had been there for a year and I celebrated the fact and, and my well, yeah. husband took the absolute mickey out of me, right? Because I'd he thought I was mental because I'd celebrated that his spot come out. But I was really excited about that because I had been there and been bugging me for a year and it come out and it and I was like, yay. Well, yeah, because then you know it's gonna come out and off it'll trot on its way. So exactly. I love the kiss, um like it's so much better. And spending our days just focusing on the negative instead of looking at what we can like people say be grateful and celebrate with gratitude and things and I love that and it's something I practice now a lot like my morning routine includes gratitude my evening routine con- um, includes gratitude but one thing that I do put in there is what have you achieved today what's your win what's your biggest win for the day and that's what I ask myself because then I, I get this even if I've already acknowledged it I acknowledge it again and I feel yeah. good about it which means I am more likely to get up the next day and do the same amazing wins again, which is what we want to see more of. So if we want to do our bit to lift the mood of the world, where do you think we should start? So we've elaborated, we know we can give high fives, we know we can give hugs. <laughs> How can we shift and lift the mood of the planet? Well, love- it all, always goes back to start where, you, start where you are, use what you got and do what you can. Um, and I have this thing, uh, uh, called but well, I say proactive happiness it's a thing and that's the words that I use to describe it's proactive happiness it's about getting hold of your own happiness and creating whatever you can for yourself rather than waiting for every other beggar on the planet to make you happy and you know you, it's almost like you know flapping in the wind then waiting for something to, to occur you, you're just leaving you know you're leaving money on the table as it were by you need leaving happiness on the table rather than taking a hold of it yourself and it doesn't have to be big things proactive happiness is is based on four four pillars so you've got four levels not four levels but four pillars four things that you would do to to create this so the first is make it important so like yourself danny you wake up in the morning you set you put this routine in place because it's important enough for you to do yeah. something about it every single day it doesn't have to be big and it, and it shouldn't be big it shouldn't be big. It should be in your life in tiny little increments because you want it to be sustainable. So you create this, this idea of happiness being important. Your happiness is important. Before anybody else's, your happiness needs to be important. You do this by honoring yourself. You do this by allowing yourself to, to claim your own time, your own energy, your own love, your own money, everything that you have in your life. You you claim it back and you say, that right, this starts with me. I'm making it important. I wake up in the morning. What am I going to do to create a really great life, to create happiness, even if it's a tiny little bit, even if things are really, really crap around you? How are you going to extract something out of your life that makes it worthwhile for that day um health is a massive thing around this you know if you haven't got a body that works and that moves you through the day if you haven't got a mind that works and helps you through the day then it's going to be really really difficult for you to 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 get some some momentum going to get some sort of energy going around this so to make it important and make it a priority is going to be the first step the second thing is pay attention and there's so many ways we can pay. I can pay attention to what you're doing. I can pay attention to how I'm, I, you know, how you connect with me. I can pay, pay attention to the words that I use. I can pay attention to the things that I do that I know make me happy. I can pay attention to the things that I do to and how they make me feel. So, you know, move away or change the way th- that things make me feel. So, for example, if I wake up in the morning and I know that, um, I don't know, having a cup of coffee um, is just going to make me feel all jittery. Then I might switch it to something else because I know that I proactively want to feel calmer. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So I'll make that shift because that is more important to me. But I, that, I do that by paying attention. So look at what is actually creating great things in your life. Look at what things are not creating great things in your life and make adjust, adjustments accordingly. So, But it's all going to be personal to you. 
And this is the thing. This is why you have to pay attention. This is not why I'm saying get up and do this and do that and put this in your routine. There's lots of suggestions, but not everything's going to work for you. So it's about paying attention to what works and doing more of that. And when I say doing more of that, it's creating those habits, which is the third pillar, creating the habits, creating the little things in your life that's going to have an impact on your health, your well-being, your emotional well-being, your mental well-being and your happiness. And ultimately, and paying attention to what happiness actually means to you. Because I, I don't know what happiness means to you, Danny. I know what it is to me. For me, it's clarity um, and excitement. Um, if I've got those two things, I know that I'm happy. But sometimes it means being calm. Sometimes it means being proud. What What is generally, what what would how would you describe happiness? How would you describe it? Well, it's always different for everybody, isn't it? For me, creativity is the first word yeah. that comes to my mind when you said that. Because I know when I'm being creative, no one can pull me down because yeah. <laughs> I love it it lifts exactly. my mood yeah and and the, that's the thing if you know that creativity is the thing that makes you happy what are the little things in your life that will allow you to be creative oh, do, go and do that do more of that yeah. usually it doesn't take any time or effort or money to do the little things in life that allow you to feel creative because when you feel creative you're happy and when you're happy you're going to go off and do amazing things which you do I know you do you do podcasts and you, you you go out there and help clients do amazing things as well and you're creating that ripple effect as well um and then the fourth one which is exactly what i'm telling you now is share share the happiness spread the happiness spread it like squishy butter if you've got plenty of happiness inside of you if you create a life that is full of joy and excitement and love and creativity and you know that you can make a difference to other people, that is the bit that you share, the, the, all the frothy bits that are coming out at the top of this cup, this full cup. When the cup's not full, it's really hard to do that. And when the cup's not full, you're giving part of who you are and you're depleting yourself. Do it from a place where you are abundant. Do it from a place where you have plenty to give and it's yeah. just going to make so much more of a difference because you're not taking anything away from yourself. I think that's one of the hardest things to do when you're a heart-led business owner who wants to lift the mood of the planet and you just don't have enough for yourself. It's like, I really want to help these people, but I'm so tired. Like, yeah. Go and do the thing that really you really and need. And I think it's easier, isn't it? it? Once we fill up our own cup, it becomes automatic. Then we can just be like, yeah, I can spread it. And your energy just becomes like infectious, like yours is infectious That's right now on this podcast. And then it's easy to just pass that forward to people. I mean, I'm not saying that my energy wasn't good, but I've just done a serious podcast before this. Yeah. And now we've got this fun, happiness-filled podcast, and it's just good to, to come that's my, that. That's my job. That's what I think my job is. And the great thing about being a happiness coach is when I'm working on my own happiness and doing the kind of things that, that I love to do, which is my job, then that has that's almost has like a um uh follow on effect that it keeps yeah. me going it keeps this is this is like my momentum this is this is the way that i keep myself going that i keep my energy going that i keep my you know my cup topped up by doing the job in the first place and i'm quite lucky because that that's self fulfilling not everybody has that job but i think as a heart led business owner the more you go out there and help other people and i'm telling you for nothing you know the because I, I do like a form and I and I ask people what are the what are the things that light them up like a Christmas tree doing the things that they love and nine times out of ten it's being able to help other people that gives me energy that gives me joy that makes me happy and by doing that it makes me more happy which means that I can then do it more often so you know it goes to stands to reason why why can't happiness be a an important value in your business mm. we talk about values we talk about business values happiness really is when you come down to it especially when you need to be part of your business when you need to be the one that, that that's putting their heart and soul into the business absolutely vital, vital. it is and you know what's interesting as well is like when we met I'm, like, I'm a happiness coach and i bet people think you can be a coach in happiness you can be a coach in anything these days whatever it is that you can tap into that you're great at which obviously yours is happiness mine's organization yes then, you know you've got a superpower roll with it because you can do what you want to do and if it i mean no pun here but if it genuinely does make you happy then why not go for it and do it and that's exactly what you've done and i love 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 that i um, do too <laughs> if you want to tap into a bit of that happiness and become part of the the, the happiness business club because i know i've seen 
from working with clients for three years in this business now, I've seen that sometimes actually not being in a place where you can find happiness in in life and before business, that impacts your business because you are then trying to push through because you want the results for your business, you want to make money, you want to get clients, but then actually because you're not happy in the first place, you're not in the right energy to then make an impact and do that and help people and so on. It makes it so much harder, Dan. It makes it so much harder for yourself. I mean, how how, how much easier is it to, you know, get on a call with a a client, even a difficult client, when you're full of the joys of spring and you feel like you could burst with happiness? How much easier is it? So much easier. And you know what's interesting? I had um, I had a call with my mentor and one of the things I was talking about is that I'm just happy with where I'm at right now. I'm loving it, really enjoying it. And it's getting easier. And the problem that I brought to the session was it's getting easy. And she's like, but that's not really a problem, is it? I'm like, oh, no. So, I'm, and then I was happy because my problem was that it was easy. Yeah. And it's just like, that's a good problem to have. And I think hitting that perspective in your business is is so important. And it starts within us, doesn't it really? Yeah. So if we want to come and check out the, um the, we, want, we need to work on happiness and we want to get in, in the Happy Business Club, how can we contact you and do that? Oh, it's that easy. You just, yeah, either find me on Facebook or you find me on Instagram, send me a message. I mean, unless it's a, you know, in, unless you're trying to sell me something because I ain't, you know, <laughs> like, I, I, I'm quite happy to, to talk about happiness. But if you're, if you're sliding in my DMs and you, you're trying to sell me something, ask me. That's fine, fair enough, but I might not reply. But if you genuinely want to find out how, um, you know, to be part of the Happiness uh, Happy Business Club, to, to become part of the Happy Business Express community, um, where we, you know, we, we find out about each other, we find out about the person behind the business, which I think is really important for connection, then I'm always up for a brew and a chat. Slide into my DMs. If, you, if you're sleazy... <laughs> you know what I mean sleazy don't bother I'm sure you haven't got anybody sleazy in your community Danny so um yeah um but if you if you want to have a chat if you want to find out anything if you want to jump in I've got um a Facebook group uh which basically it's it's nothing particularly structured I just go in there whenever I feel like it I tell people what I'm up to I, I help I get them to join into some games and some challenges and you know ask asking themselves questions and it's it's quite informal, um. But you know, when I do like a lead magnet, for example, I've got a lead magnet at the moment, or a freebie, if you like to call it that, um, which is five of the easiest ways to get your freaking mojo back. So if you, <laughs> yeah, you know, if you, it, I've got stuff like that in there. So just come and find me, and I'll tell you what it is that I've got. And if there's anything there that you, because I do a lot of like freebie stuff and a lot of challenges, and you know, I just do it for the funsies more than anything else. Um, then come and find me. Ask me about it. I'll give you whatever links you need. You can join in. I love it when people join in, especially when we get up to all these weird shenanigans. We did bed bingo one time um, <laughs> where I was set, setting out to um, to prove that you can actually get happy before even leaving your bed. And I, I had like 30 different things that you could potentially do in your bed before you even get out of bed, which would actually set you up for the day. So we did the, a game called bed bingo. Um, we do things like, at the moment, we're doing a shifties and boosties thing. So you know, um, tiny little habits, you know, for the new year, when you when you get your head back on straight and you think, right, I've got to, this is going to be my year and I'm going to do this, this and this and this. But you yeah. we tend to make our vision really far too big and the actions behind it far too big and we end up just leaving it because life gets in the way. But um, one of the things that I did when I first started a couple of years ago is I worked on my health and because I worked on my health that then impacted my energy and I created this consistent flow of energy every single day Uh, I can't say I'm happy all the time but the vast majority of I am and it amazes me even I was like is this real pinch me pinch me is this actually real? but it is and it's the thing that I've always wanted to be like this vibrant energy and I've kind of like I've cracked it. I feel like I've cracked it, but I know what I've done to get here. And what we've done is we've worked on health uh, and tiny little things around health and, you know, being wholehearted about that. And it's not difficult. It really it's isn't not. difficult. You so just have to, to do it. get started, haven't you, really, yeah. at the end of the day? Yes, yeah. I love that. So definitely go and check out Michelle. Her energy is infectious. If you want to be happy, just talk to her because then your mood will just change anyway. Yeah. That's the and first if you thing want to, to do. Yeah. 
And if you want to write for the Happy Business Express, I've got a little link. It gives you, you sign up to it. You get a copy of the current magazine. You get like, um, uh, you'll get like a contribution guideline. So it basically tells you what you can, what you can submit and what we're after. And all the information is there from the questions that you normally ask. Um, and I've also got some new coming up as well. I'm going to be doing a YouTube show. Ooh, ex that experts. I know loads of people that have businesses that are experts in their field, and we're going to be calling it experts eating cake. Ah, do you actually get to eat cake? You got to bring your own cake, but we will be talking about cake. If you don't like cake, then That's don't bother the applying. All right, <laughs> <laughs> not out yet, but it, it will be ready to launch over the next um few weeks I'm, I'm talking myself into a corner here because it's, it's now just you've got to put it out there i know I it's sitting it. as an idea in my head i've been putting thing you know putting things out there so yeah people... well that's great because i know how many experts you've already got in the magazine and how much like there's a vast wide of not you know knowledge in there so it'll be good to see them come into video form in mm. youtube as well so i'll be checking that out so what i will oh, you'll be is... on it you'll be on oh, it i'll Danny. be on it guys come and see me and michelle um <laughs> And I will put a link in the in this podcast when um when it's out as well. We yes. I'll come back in and edit and I'll drop it in so that you can check it out. So definitely come back and check Michelle's podcast and and the no, I mean, it's a show. It's a yeah. it's a telly show. We're gonna do yeah, this, come show. And this podcast when you've yeah. listened to it. Oh, this back, podcast, the telly show. Yeah. Right, yeah. I've got it. Yeah. Getting myself all muddled now. That's how you know I've been doing a lot of work and when I, when my <laughs> world stopped working. But thank you so much for being on with us. I have loved this. It's so good to hear what's going on, what's coming up. And um, I've just got to ask you one question that I ask all my guests. And well, I don't know what you're going to be answers going to be to this now. So let's see. What would be your biggest tip to being organised in your business? Do what makes you happy. Ah, I love that. Could not have been a better sentence said. No. That, love it. Do, do what makes you happy that's it yeah start there work on the planning and everything else i talk about but start with the happiness first yes absolutely I love that. all right thank, you, thank so you so much for letting me on here and flapping <laughs> my chops and getting all excited <laughs> about things do you know what what happens I, every time i go on a podcast and i talk about something i have no idea what i'm going to be talking about and when i finish i have absolutely no idea what i talked about until i actually listen to the podcast afterwards <laughs> <laughs> it's always a surprise to me as well but I thank you so much way. for the opportunity you're welcome thank you for joining us